are now in a new moment in this pandemic. It does not mean that COVID-19 is over. It means that COVID-19 no longer controls our lives. Two years later, looking ahead, Maryland is not in the same place it was when COVID entered our lives. What area doctors still have their eyes on as a new dominant variant emerges and mass restrictions lifted. Well, that's not stopping one University of Maryland team's research on that topic. Why well, they say now is the time for local innovation. Hello everyone, I'm Jason Newton. Welcome to 11 TP Hill. And although we're not yet in the endemic stage of the COVID-19 pandemic, the virus is not impacting our lives the way it did back in 2020. There's vaccines and antiviral treatments to prevent severe infections. Now that's impacting the virus's transmission. Right now, the CDC reports all Maryland counties have what it considers low community transmission. Hospitals are even seeing the difference. Now they're once again adapting their workflow on treating patients. And join us now from Northwest Hospitals, Dr. Kendall Sheth. Thanks for the time. Thank you for having me. This is a big difference from the first time you and I got together. We we're actually in person, which says something I'm thinking. Definitely. It's really nice to actually be here in person, and yeah. it's a reflection of the hospital metrics. Everything's been getting a lot better, and hopefully we're going back to a normal society again. Tell me about the hospital now, because, I mean, staffing had been an issue. Uh, the number of people are coming in at one time, volume. What's it like now? So we've done a very good job with, you know, ramping up in terms of our staffing. We're actually, you know, at where we need to be right now. We're definitely meeting all of the hospital and patient needs. The numbers are going down a lot, so we don't have the volume that we were seeing in the past. Does that change the way you operate now, the way you think about COVID? Before it was short term. People come in, we try to fix it and figure out what works and what doesn't. Now, do you look long term of this is what worked before and we can apply this? A hundred percent. And okay. I think the biggest thing is before we were kind of just focusing on COVID, COVID, COVID. Sure. And we're going back to real medicine again. And so COVID's going to be a part of that, but it's just going to be like any other disease that we're treating in the hospital. So we can kind of focus on the wide breadth that we were focusing on before. Tell me about getting vaccinations also, because uh, most people have gone through the whole scope now you've had your shots and now the booster really comes into play why is it so important now that the booster is the shot that you finish it off with well so in all of the numbers are kind of showing with the Omicron variant and now this like new stealth variant yeah. that both of them are highly contagious. And so we're trying to prevent people from getting a severe disease and that's what the booster is going to do. So uh, immunity wanes after a certain period of time with the vaccine, sure. but with that booster, you're kind of getting kind of a, a bigger jump start to your immune system to fight a new infection again. You mentioned that sub variant, the BA2. How is that different from Omicron or is there a, a big difference? So it's basically kind of a mix of Delta and Omicron a little bit together. Okay. And so the way it works is is that it is actually even more contagious. What we're definitely seeing though is that it's not as um, severe, so it's very mild. So that is at least a good benefit. This is kind of what we were always hoping for, that it would mutate to something less you know, deadly than it was in the very beginning. Yeah, and I'm guessing that since the volume is down, people are heeding the advice. I mean, that has to play a role in it as well, yeah? D definitely, I mean, I think over the last two years, just the way the healthcare system has learned, the entire society has learned, you know, masks really work, yeah. vaccinations work, the booster works, we actually have now more treatment for once you get COVID. So there are lots of different options that we have that we didn't have in our tool belt before. You mentioned masks, and, and I'm curious with you, as we see the, the regulations drop, even the airlines are considering it, but not yet. Are you comfortable at this point as you go to the mall yourself, maybe, or you go to church or whatever that, that some of these counties have decided we're going to drop it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you kind of have to weigh your individual risk. I, okay. I'll tell you, when I go into a to a large crowd, I still feel a little bit concerned and mm -hmm. I, I'll wear a mask on. So it depends on kind of just, you know, the distance that I'm keeping between other people, you know, who else I'm with. When I'm with my parents who are elderly and have some, you know, other conditions, then I'm a little bit more worried and try to mask up and things like that. So it just, I think it depends on situation to situation. Yeah, no harm done in wearing it. I, exactly. Tell me a little bit also, because I had the experience of going into the grocery store. It was a smaller store uh, and I went to the, the medical rack and there were tests for days. I mean, you're dozens over dozens. I, I guess that means that we've gotten to the point now where it's not, you don't have to hoard anymore and that they're readily available. Should people still be taking the test? Definitely, if you have symptoms, just because it is very contagious and can spread to other people. Mm -hmm. But the thing that is nice is that finally, after two years, we actually have enough tests. I think, you know, one of the biggest things that we didn't do in the beginning was test soon enough and have enough tests for everyone. And so now we've finally caught up to that. I was listening to some of your colleagues from Hopkins and they're saying, listen, be cautiously optimistic because there is a chance we could end up right back where we were before. Uh, 
Are you feeling the same way? Do you feel like we were better prepared this time around? I definitely think we're better prepared. Uh, you never know what's going to be around sure. every, the corner, right? We've kind of learned with coronavirus that you know every we should expect the unexpected, but that doesn't mean that we should lose hope. I mean, sure. we've been a lot through a lot over the last two years, and so I think now we really should try to go back to a normal life. There is definitely side effects, you know, of kind of what happened over the last two years. Sure. Last one for you. Well, what leaves you hopeful the most? Uh, you know, when I walk into the hospital now, I remember during the height of the pandemic, I was not only scared for my personal safety, but just for everyone around me. Yeah. And there was just this kind of feeling of dread because mm -hmm. we didn't know what we were really up against. And now when I walk into the hospital, it is a complete 180. There's a lot of hope. We know what we're fighting. We mm -hmm. have a lot of success stories. And that makes me really optimistic for the future. Let's keep that progress going. Dr. Sheth, good to see you. Good Appreciate to see you too. It.